Okay, so I'm gonna try to solve this. Solve this problem. Topological sort. And yeah, so you're given a directed graph, find any topological sorting of that graph. So the basic thing is just gonna be figuring out what the concept is. <coughs> so I've already drawn these out. So these are the examples we're given here, these inputs. Um, so the problem is we're gonna, we wanna topologically sort this. So how do we do that? Well, uh, my strategy was going to be basically to iterate through my list and see basically if it's been visited or not. So I'm going to create a stack and create visited. So a stack is going to be like this, and my visited will be like this. It'll be a set. Um, so emphasize. Uh, well, no. Uh, so yeah. So the main thing is uh, change color to green. So the main thing is, is I'm going to iterate through my list and I'm going to start as a node. So let's say I start at this node 0 because it's the smallest number. Um, and so I say, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a DFS search on it. So one thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to add 0 to my visited. And then I want to add 0 to my stack as well. Well, no, I'm not going to add 0 to my stack yet, but um, what I'm going to do is basically go to 0, and then when I go to 0, I'm going to look. Does 0 have any children that it, it can travel to? Well, no, it doesn't have any children I can travel to, so I'm going to uh, put it to my stack. Um, I'm just using my top sort. Okay. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, that's cool. And I'm going to go to 1 as my next value. And I'm going to visit 1. And I'm going to do DFS on it. So it's going to say, hey, I can go to 3. So it calls DFS on 3. But at 3, there are no children. So it will uh, add this one to my stack. Um because there are no children. Uh, also, I should mention, this will be added to my visited. And then, basically, it'll backtrack to 1. Uh, and at 1, it will say, there's anything else to explore for 1. So I'll add 1 to my stack. Now, we'll go to the next value, which is 2. And 2, I'll do DFS on it. So I'll add 2 to my visited, and I'll go to 3, but I'll say, well, 3 is already visited, so I'm not going to do anything. I'll go back to 2, and i say, okay, well, there's nothing else to explore from 2, so I'll add 2 to my stack, and then we'll go to 3, but when we go to 3, we'll say, well, 3 is already invisited, so we won't do, go to 3, then we'll go to 4, and at 4, we'll ex do DFS, we'll explore um, to 1, We'll say, well, hey, one has already been visited, so we'll stop. Um, we we'll would only explore if it hasn't been visited. We also won't explore zero because it's been visited already. So we'll add four to my visited, and I'll actually go to my stack. Then I'll say I'll go to my last one, which is five, and I'll look around. Can I go to zero? Can I go to two? No. Both of them have been in my, are in my visited uh, set. So I'll add five to visited, and I'll add five to my stack. And then, now this is not in topological sort. Topological sort will be if I take the uh, the other direction of this. Um, this is the topological sort. And we can check this by making sure it has topological ordering, which means that any node that comes first in the sort will have a directed edge from it to another node, but we should never see um, an edge going from a node that appears later to a node that appears previously because then you would have um, the, well that's not a topological short <laughs> I don't know how to explain that better but 
but okay, yeah, so like 5 goes to 2, 5 goes to 0, um, 0 doesn't go to anything, 3 doesn't go to anything, 1 will go to 3, so that's good, uh, 2 will go to 3 as well, so we're good there, 4 will go to 0, and 4 will go to 1. So yeah, this is a topological ordering, and now we're going to try to code this. So go here. Um, Alright, so I'm going to create the functions that I will need. So one function I will need will be a DFS. Um, okay, so now I'm going to create the data structures that I think I'll need. So I'll need a visited, and it'll be a set, and I'll need a... Um, a uh, stack, we'll call it, we'll just do that. So then uh, we'll start by doing 4i in range ah, length of the graph. So um, so yeah, so length of the graph. So the length of the graph will be because this graph is an adjacency list. It's a default dictionary, actually, is what it says right here. So it will have like the keys, um, and actually, yeah, yeah, this would work. There's also another way to do it. I could um, just do for k in graph dot keys. I think that's the way to do it. Or actually, the default dictionary you just have to do for k in graph. Um, but uh. It will go in a different order. It, it doesn't really matter, but like, um, I mean, we can do this. So I can do this because the graph is a dictionary. So I can get every key. Now, when we get a key, what we want to do is we want to check if k not in visited. If k not in visited, um, then you want to do a DFS search on it. So we'll do a DFS. And I think it's important to know what k is. It's important to know what's in visited. It's important to know the graph. I think that's all you need. And is the number of edges. Uh, I don't know if I need that. <laughs> so I'll do a DFS search on it. If k is not in visited. Okay, so that's what I was talking about earlier, where like you only will de do a def depth first search if it is um, not in the visited set. Uh, we need to do depth first search, so it looks like we're going to be taking the, the uh, visited graph, and then over here, well, it's going to say, call this, this is basically a, a vertex. We'll just say, I'll say V, V, yeah. Um, okay. So in the DFS, what we'll do is we're going to, one thing we want to say is, okay, we're visiting right now this node um, add, um, add V. And then also, I'm going to just put this a little early, but yeah, also we want to return stack, but we want to return it in the reverse order. So we'll do that. Um, okay. So we're going through this. As far as I can tell, this is all the code that I need up here, I believe. Um. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to visit the added. Now we need to think about our cases. So case number one is we want to explore the graph's um, edges. So we could do for the, mm, no, 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 for you in range of length of graph, and we'll use V. Um, so what's going on here is that this is a default dictionary containing a list of the adjacent nodes. So what's really happening is, let's say graph is 1. 
this is equal to, <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah, graph of one would be equal to, uh, well, could be equal to, uh, I already forgot what my table was, but I think one pointed to three. So if you go to a list of three. So we would want to run through the list, but uh, we only want to visit it if it hasn't been visited yet. So if uh, sorry, it's actually for you in graph B, I think. Um, and then I'll do if you not in visited, then I'll just do a DFS search with you uh, visited in graph. Um, yeah, so we'll go through this again. Okay, so cool. Now this is for if using the if it has some adjacency, right? So we'll go through the three, and then we'll go to the three, and the three might have an edge to another one, and we'll go to that one. But at the end, it will stop. Once it reaches the end, um, what we do is we're gonna. So, so if we if U is not invisited, that means U is visited. Actually, it's the case if. Yeah, so you explore all the way down to U. Now, what I think is gonna happen is that if you get to a point where U is not invisited, um, you want to append, right? So it's gonna keep looking for it in the visited here. And then if for some reason we get to the point where, uh, let me get my example uh, here. So we get to the point where I was like at, uh, I think, uh, one right and one went to three and that was good but then when I went to four I was like well hey everything is visited already so the reality is you just want to append that so you just do stack dot append uh, the I think yeah so basically if you can't do this um, if you not invisit it um, okay um, and if this doesn't, um, print, what am I missing? Let me think through my example if this works. So for my example, I have, um, visited equals this, and then stack equals this. So first thing is we explore zero, and zero is has nothing right so it's just going to append so we'll append it to here and we already add zero to here now we go to our next value which is floor one and one will basically it'll have an edge which is uh is equal to one and u be equal to our graph of one is equal to this with I think just three. So we go to three and we explore three. Um, but you can see that for three, there's nothing, there's no adjacency list. So it's just going to add three. Also, I should mention, this is or it should have already added one and it should add three. Now it's going to add three to the stack. Oops. Add three to the stack. And then uh, it'll, it, it's a recursion, so it'll go back up to the one value, and I'll run, uh, down here, so then I'll add one, oops, one, okay, and then I'll say, let's go to two, and two, it will add two to my visitor, here, right, it's going to add it, because it's my first thing that happens. Then it's going to search the adjacency list, which adjacency list will contain the node 3, 
but node 3 isn't visited, so it's not going to continue DFS search. Instead, it's just going to append the 2 to the stack. So we get the 2. Now, we go to maybe 3, but 3 is invisited, so you know we're not going to DFS search it. Uh, we go to 4, and 4 might not be in it, so 4 will work. We're going to 4, we'll add it to my visited. And then I know the 0 might be in and I did it, so it's not going to do anything there, so I'll just push this here. And I'm saying I'm going to 5, to 5. And this is the right answer. Yes. So it looks like, as I walk through the code, it looks like it'll work. Uh, let's try something out real quick. Oh, I accidentally renamed this. Okay. Yeah, so there might be some errors here. Um, let's see, this is, this is this trace back. Most recent call is last one. Most recent call was line 21. Stack is not defined. So here, when I just stack that append. Okay, I know why. I need to pass the stack in here. Oops, okay, there we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, this time it says, oh, yeah, uh, I have to put the stack here. Okay, is that it? I think that's it. I only called DFS three times. Okay, uh, so we'll go back to this. Now it says, Dictionary change size during iteration. Line nine for k in graph. Really? Dictionary change size. Huh. I don't know how I'm changing the size of the dictionary. I'm not editing the graph, am I? No. What if I just say, what if I just not even pass graph into this because I'm not doing anything with graph anyway. Dictionary thing to change size. It's interesting. Let's um try exploring if it will uh, print anything. It might not print anything. Um, sorry. <laughs> Obviously, that won't work. Okay, compiling test. So if there's an error in compiling, it probably won't print uh, anything. What if I did expected outcome when I did, oops, and I do this. If I do expected outcome, is it the same thing? Oh, that's just give me an expected. But yeah, let's run code. That's what I want to do. Okay, fine. So dictionary is changing size. This isn't too big of a deal. I could just stay in range. <coughs> oh, shoot, sorry. Uh, length, or excuse me. Um, length of. Oh, this is getting really bad. Like, I just completely am not understanding what this editor is expecting of me. But yeah, I could do a length of, uh, maybe not, well, length of, uh, graph. It might say this doesn't work because graph changes size. Yeah. 
So I'm going to be honest. Um, this part I don't understand, but I think you can do this. You can do... Okay, I'm going to test something out real quick. So I'm forgetting. So lists are mutable, right, in Python. But uh, if you do one, it does that. It does it mutate it? It doesn't mutate it. Okay. So you have to say stack equals this, and you have to do stack dot of pen negative one. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this. Later. This is a problem I've had with before, and like I had to look. Uh, what's going on? It still says out of range. It's so hard to debug this when you can't print. Um, best way to debug this might be to run this in my Sublime Editor. But, um, um, I don't necessarily want to do that. Um, let me check. Uh, there's probably sweeping down here. Uh, let me think about this for a minute. It says, let me check map res i list index out of range. Yeah, so they build this up here, create graph, check map. Okay, let's check uh, somebody else did in Python. What's going on? Not working. Okay, there we go. Python. What's up? Okay, we have three, one. Some node does not present in the graph. When you loop through the graph and add nodes to the stack, some nodes will not appear in the stack, making the length of the stack less than the solution is to loop through range in. But if you loop through range in, I don't really understand what he's saying. Uh, in is a number, number of edges, right? So if I loop through that, Isn't the number of edges could be different? So, uh, let's try it. Huh. Interesting. So that actually worked. This makes me curious, so let's start um, exploring. Now that this has worked, I'm going to explore and see if I can understand why looping through the number of edges is the reason why this works. So, okay, we have 266525223441133430102. Your output is 6 and 4. So this one has 6 edges. So in this one you have 6 edges, you have 0 to 5 nodes. When you have 4 edges, you have 0 to 3 nodes. So this case here, uh, where you have 0 to 5, you basically have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I guess that's a property. Um, let me look at property of directed acyclic graph and number of edges to vertices. So I think you always have one more edge than you do vertices. That is the vertex equals edges minus one. Well, maybe maybe we can even prove this. So 
if you look at this example here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six edges, right? If we were to have one more edge, we would have this. Okay, yeah, this is easy to prove. If you add one more edge, you're going to get a cycle. Um, so yeah, so you always have one more edge, then you do vertices. So if you iterate through that, you're good. Because for some reason, and this is something that I'm going to try to figure out, but for some reason, a graph is, um, does something to it. I don't, well, I don't know what I'm going to be saying at this point. <laughs> Okay, 0, 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, okay. mm. so what if I did this, 4k in graph, print k, I'm going to record this, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, keep looking through this, but it looks like, you know, um, I did as much as I can, so I'm just going to pause this right now. Um, okay, so I'm going to discuss, <laughs> this is a really bad attempt, um, this is hard just because this is like, I haven't used this editor before and how they do tests on this website, so this is ended up being really rough, but um, it turns out that for this to work, you cannot um, go through the length of the graph. You want to just go through the number of edges. And if you do this, this happens. So yeah, it returns five, four, two, one is three, and you know that's correct. Um, and three, two, one, zero, and one. One means that it was correct. So yeah, that's really cool. I don't need this. I don't need any like weird stuff. I don't need to append anything. With, um, yeah, it's just straight up DFS at it. Uh, let's submit, see what happens. But um, yeah, so this is a very <laughs> bizarre problem for me. I kind of enjoy just, I mean, the main thing to get out of it was just learning the topological sort and one met, one algorithm to do it. And the runtime for this is probably, uh, you have a for loop here. And then you have a DFS that has a for loop, or a for loop that depends on the number of adjacencies. Okay, K is the number of edges, right? So it's going to be O of E. So I'll write it down here. So it's going to be O of E for sure, because we're going to range through this number of edges. And then we're going to do DFS, and DFS could range through uh, the number of adjacencies. And the number of adjacencies, the max it could be, is V, I think. So, I think that would be times V, because it could run through, this is like, um, the, uh, worst case, I guess, like, if, if, for some reason, one node is attached to all the nodes, um, so yeah, um, not an awesome time complexity. I've heard you can do this in this, which I might want to explore a little more. Let's uh, let's actually look it up a little bit. Um, let's see. So this Kane's uh, Khan's algorithm. So let's just look at what the um, what the runtime, the time complexity is. Um, yeah. So the time complexity is. O of V plus E. Now, if we go back to this one, the DFS, which is what I just did. So, yeah, I just did this. Um, okay, if you can redo this. Uh, oops. Da -da 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 -da. Give me a click on that. Um, uh, okay, it's complexity. What? They did an O of V plus E. Uh, what's their code? Okay, they use a graph. What is that graph? Add edge. Uh, okay, this is creating a graph. Okay, the topological sort. Mark the current node as visitor. Um, recur for all vertices adjacent to this vertex. Okay, so here we have, you're going through V. And then you're calling 
using topological sort util. Um, again, so it's going to go back to this, go through, and it might be another for loop. Um, mm, yeah, I'm not sure how this is v plus e. I feel like here, if you do, if you go through a function and you call it, and then you like are recursing. Um, boy, this is.